Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining the Bronner versus Garcia and Charlo versus Highland Media Conference Call. Your host for today, Lou Dabella, will begin. Thanks, everybody, for joining us uh, for what's going to be a terrific card um, with Adrian Broner versus Mikey Garcia in, in the main event in a 12-round junior welterweight fight on Showtime Championship Boxing presented by Premier Boxing Champions on July 29th, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Pacific Time um, at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York, the home of Brooklyn Boxing. Um, it's going to be a terrific card. It's being promoted by Mayweather Promotions and my company. Um, I want to shout out to Leonard Ellerby and Floyd Mayweather and, and uh, all their staff who are working with us on this card. As you all know, that they've been pretty busy lately. Um, I'm not sure if Leonard's going to join us during this call, but uh, if he does, I'll throw it over to him when he does. Um, tickets can be purchased at Ticketmaster.com, BarclayCenter.com, or by calling 1-800-745-3000. And there have been some adjustments to the ticket pricing um, with respect to locations um, that are fan-friendly. So if, if people uh, go on Ticketmaster now, uh, you will see some uh, adjustments that I think uh, uh, you know, fans will, will, will like when they're purchasing their tickets. Um, we're going to start with the, the opening. Now, first of all, there's a terrific off TV on the card today, uh, a, a terrific card involving Rashid Warren was – was added to the card. Um, Jarrell Miller is fighting Gerald Washington on the card. Katie Taylor from Ireland is on the card. Noel Murphy, um, Richardson Hitchens, a bunch of great local talent. It's a terrific card um, from top to bottom. The opening TV fight features one of the up-and-coming young stars in boxing. Um, he's already been a world champion at 154 pounds, the IBF 54-pound champion. He made three title defenses against um, Julian Williams, Austin Trout, and uh, Wilkie uh, Campford. Um, he's now the number two ranked middleweight in the world by the WBC, trained by Ronnie Shields, uh, one of the best young fighters in the world. This will be his New York debu debut, um, Jamal Charlo. And Jamal will be fighting Sebastian Highland, the number one ranked middleweight by the WBC from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Um, this is also his New York debut, and he's fighting in the U.S. for only the second time. He, uh, he holds a knockout win against former world title challenger Matthew Macklin. He's the former BC Latino and WBC international middleweight champ, titleist. So I'm going to throw it over to um, the Sebastian Highland and his translator, Sebastian. So uh, Sebastian, could Sebastian Highland say a few words? Uh, decir algunas palabras para, para presentarte, para agradecerle la oportunidad y todo eso. Puedo decirlas en español y yo traduzco. Bueno, traigo bueno, las bueno, with a record of 25 and 0 with 19 KOs out of Houston, Texas, Jamal Trollo. Yeah, how you doing? Thanks, everybody, for having me. Um, as our debut in New York, I'm ready to, to steal the show and, and put on a great show. I know um, Healing is coming all the way from his hometown to to um, shut my career down and everything that I've worked hard for, so I'm, I'm prepared for everything he has um, to offer. Um and it's going to be a great show. It's going to be a great night of boxing. Um, we're, we're going to open this up for questions. What's that? I said we're going to open up for questions from the press to both fighters. Perfect. And ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. 
Again, if you have any questions at this time, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Our first question is going to come from Dan. Please go ahead. Raphael from ESPN, please go ahead. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Uh, hey, Jamal, how are you today? i got a couple of questions for you. All right. I'm doing that. Um, my first question is, uh, you know, after your, your knockout against uh, Julian Williams in a, in a really good performance to keep your, your 154-pound title, uh, I was wondering, when you decided to go up in weight, was it strictly a matter of struggling over the last maybe a couple of fights to make the 154-pound weight limit, or did you just feel – that there might be better opportunities at 160, even though there's obviously still good fighters uh, in the junior middleweight division that have title belts and uh, and uh, have you know a bit of a name. I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was for a matter of time. Um, I felt like I've done, I did everything at, at you know at that time to be the best at 154 pounds. Um, with my twin brother having to build, Ares Londi Laura having to build. Um, one of the belts, WBO going vacant or whatnot, and me having an IBF, it was it was better opportunity at 160. Okay, so when you look at the landscape, and I'm not certainly overlooking uh, Jorge Highland, who's got a good record and been in the ring with some good fighters, uh, but when you when you do your, you know, I know you're a smart boxing guy because we've had these conversations, and you look at the landscape at 160 pounds. There's a huge fight in September between Canelo and Triple G. Um, there's there's a number of good boxers in that weight division. What do you see as as your path to one of those world title belts and, and how you can put yourself up in that level of name recognition with some of those other big stars in that weight class. Basically it's like me capturing, um, you know, I'm not overlooking, I'm not overlooking uh, even at all, but I have to do what I did at 154 pounds um, or they're not going to think I'm rich. Um, so my job is to fight as hard as I can and train as hard as I can and fulfill my dream. And that's becoming a, Two-time world division world champion. And when you look at Jorge Highland's record, and uh, you take a look at the at the career that he has had, I mean, he's got the one, uh, you know, real solid win, I guess. Uh, um, but it, not a lot of, you know, he's got the knockout against Macklin. Macklin was, you know, let's be honest, a little bit near the end of his career at that moment in time. Uh, is there anything on his record that gives you pause at all? Yeah, um, he's seasoned. I mean. He's a fighter that knows what he's been he, he's doing and he knows what he came here for. Um, he's been fighting um, since 2007, so he's 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 from Argentina and it's it's not like it is in America. So he has he had to take the same route when he made it this far to be the, the for two years in a row being the number one WBC fighter. I'm not taking him lightly at all. I got you. I wouldn't expect that you would, Jamal. Uh, thank you very much and uh, good luck next week. Thank you. Our next question is going to come from Keith Eidick from theboxingscene.com. Please go ahead. My question is for Jamal. Jamal, can you tell us what you think Highland does well and, and some of the things maybe you need to guard against in the fight? Teddy um, and Highland, he, he's, a, he's a good fighter. He's strong. He, he, um, he, he, he comes to fight every time he comes to fight, and, and, and that's what I do know about him. Jamal, obviously, if you win this fight, you're going to be the mandatory in the WBC. Um, do you feel like the winner of the Alvarez uh, Golovkin fight could be the next fight for you if you win this fight? No, I'm taking it fight at a time right now. Um, I'll get with my team after the fight is over, um, and, and and we'll map out everything from that point on. I also have a question for uh, for Highland. Um, can you ask him what it what it feels like for him to come to this country, obviously as a big underdog against Jamal Charlo, um, you know, what it means to him to come here and also, you know, maybe the odds he's facing coming into this fight as an underdog?
and uh, I trained. I uh, had great training camp back home, and uh, as I said before, I came here prepared for a battle, and uh, and uh, and I am in, of course, to be the winner. So, uh, if you guys consider me the underdog, I really don't care. Well, the uh, the well, odds maker consider me the underdog. That's more what I meant, but. Um... Uh, can you ask him also what it would mean for for him and his life, uh, you know, if he was able to win this fight because he'd obviously get a title shot from there. Okay. ¿Qué, qué significaría eh, qué significaría ganar esta pelea para para vos? Muy importante para mí. Eh, a lo largo de estos dos años pasé por un montón de cosas. Sin embargo, nunca dejé de empezar. Siempre puse la misma mano. La verdad que es importantísimo para mí ganar esta pelea. Antes. Uh, you know, uh, during those two years that I was seated in the number one spot in the WBC rankings, I went through a lot of things, uh, really a lot of things. Uh, but I never quit. I never stopped training. Uh, so obviously, for me, this is a crucial point of my career and my own personal life. So uh, obviously, it would be very important to beat uh, a guy of the magnitude of Charlo at his own backyard. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Our next question is going to come from Lynn Satterfield from the Boxing Premier Champ. Champs, please go ahead. Hey, guys. How you doing, Jamal? How you doing? How you doing? Hey, um, talk Austin Trout. I know you're, you're very much established focused on Highland, but I did talk to Austin Trout. Um, about you and your common opponent, Canelo. And he says that you're better right now than Canelo. Um, and he also, I also wanted to ask you to give me your scouting report on Danny Jacobs' performance against Golovkin and, you know, uh, what you think um, that says about your chance to get your power, your range, and your overall boxing skills. I'm at the top of my game right now. Um, I'm 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 actually more hungry and focused on um, on beating Holland than I've probably been even in fighting Trout. Um, thank Trout for the for the kind words. Um, he put up a great fight against me. But um, moving forward at 160 pounds, I feel like this is where I should have been the whole time. So now the the pressure is on me to to look good and perform good. At my highest performance, and 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 get the fans what they need to see, so I can continue to reign. Um, GGG and and Danny Jacobs was a great fight. You know, uh, Jacobs showed a lot of heart. He he he, he exploited um, the left hand. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm focused on just moving on to the next level, and that's. I'm saying that Jacobs is a great fighter. Sebastian, can you can you we, we can't hear the fighter with the translation. Can can he sorry. repeat that last? Can you repeat that last part? I'm really sorry, Jamal. Can you hear over Sebastian? Um, I, um, I said, you know, uh, Danny Jacobs and and um, GGG had a, a a nice hard fight. You know, um, the fight the fight showed where you know GGG. GGG um, got hit a lot more than we probably seen him get hit, and Danny Jacobs, you know, exploited those those mistakes that he was making. And I know Canelo's looking at that, thinking that he's gonna go into the fight and do what uh, Danny Jacobs did. But I feel like Danny is a better fighter. Um, but you know, look, I'm I'm not focused on that right now. My my main focus is to get to the next level, and um, all the pressure is on me to perform at my highest level that I've ever performed at right now. So I'm not necessarily focused on um, the winner out of the the, the 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 champions right now. I'm focused on becoming the number one spot where they have to avoid me. Understood, understood. One more question for you. You mentioned that um, you should have been at 160 all along. I'm not sure if you meant as far back as the Trout fight or even the Williams fight. But having said that, having said that, um, do you expect your power to translate immediately to this weight class? And uh, how far do you think you'll, before you enter this weight class, do you think you need to be to have 
to be at the top of your game physically um, at this weight? Knockout power is something that's God-given. Um, I expect my power to translate immediately, like you said. Um, not only that, I'm feeling a lot better. Um, as you know, um, making 154 pounds was, was the objective, and, and it was the goal all along. But now my focus has been on sharpening up me and sharpening up my mind frame. And, and now that I put my physical strength with my my sharper mind frame, I feel like I'm going to fight a lot better. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. I know the very Next question. I think that's actually the last question um, for this group. Oh, okay. And we, then we'll, get, move, move, we'll move on to the main event. Yeah. Um, if anyone has any other questions or interview requests for uh, Charlo and Highland, they can reach out to Swanson Communications, and we can set up extra interviews. Um, but go or, ahead. Or they, can go, or they can just go to my – uh, Instagram or Twitter or something and, and, and ask me the question directly at Future of Boxing. All right. Thank you, Jamal, and thank you, Sebastian, and I look forward to seeing you guys in Brooklyn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The, the main event on this show is a sensational matchup between Adrian Broner and Mikey Garcia. Um, Mikey's undefeated, 36-0. and 0. Adrian is 33-2. and 2. But Adrian's undefeated at 140 pounds, which is the weight for this fight. Um, this is a fight that really is a fight between two stars. It's a fight between two guys whose names come up in pound-for-pound pound kind of discussions. Um, Mikey Garcia, at 36-0 and with 30 KOs, um, has not knocked out 19 of his last 21 opponents. He won the BC lightweight title in his last bout on January 28 with a third-round KO of undefeated Dejan Zlatikainen to become a three-division world champion. Um, he's held titles at featherweight, super featherweight, and lightweight, um, and he's never fought above 138. So this is his first fight at 140, and he's taking on one of the, the very best. So, um, Mikey, would you like to say a few words, please? Hi, I'm, I'm here. How are you doing, Dan? Mikey, you want to say a few words to everybody? Yeah, well, you know what? We're... Uh... Finishing up camp over here. I'm very excited, very happy for the uh, fight. Um, you know, we're just a little over a week uh, to go, and uh, I think it's it's going to be one hell of a fight. I think people are going to be very excited to see me. Um, you know, it's, it's it is a new challenge, like you mentioned. You know, fighting 140 pounds uh, for the first time, and especially against you know a top you know former world champion and Adrian Broner. So I, I think it's going to be you know, another opportunity for me to show the fight fans and all the media what I'm capable of doing. And that's what I'm, I'm most excited about, to give them another side of Mikey Garcia. Is it time for questions? Are we having connection problems there? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, Lou, are you there? This line is here, but okay. Um, can Leonard, are you there? I'm here. Okay. Um. Would you be able to introduce Adrian? I believe Adrian's on the line. Adrian, are you on the line? Yeah. I do apologize. One moment. Um, I believe we have that person in the in, in the room. Adrian's on. No. Um. Leonard, why don't you um, make some comments and then just you could turn it over to Adrian and then we'll open it up for questions. Okay. Oh, there's Lou. Okay. I know I'm here. I know I'm here. The last thing I was saying was simply that Adrian, that people don't realize this, but Adrian's 27 years old. He's actually two years younger than Mikey. Um, undefeated at the weight of 140, uh, 
and I'm going to turn it over now to my good friend Leonard Ellerby, who's one of the busiest guys in boxing these days. Uh, been traveling all over the world and getting FaceTime on every channel in international channel and every sports channel and every channel in the universe. And um, I'm happy that we're co-promoting this event together. And I'll I'll let uh, Leonard say a few words and then throw it over to Adrian. Leonard? Leonard's line has dropped from the call. One moment, please. I think she should be back on. Okay, they're back. Hey, Leonard. Leonard? Can you hear me? Uh, we can hear you now. You want to say a couple of words and throw it over to Adrian? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, the phone had cut off like three times. Well, we we have you now, so why don't you say a couple of words to the press and then throw it over to the to Adrian. Okay, sure. Hello? Leonard, go ahead. Okay. I'd like to um, thank everyone for joining the call today. We're really excited about this great event we have next week. It's going to be... Again, I think it's it's going to be a very very exciting fight. Um, most of the media are favoring are favoring Mikey Garcia to win the fight. Um, I think that I feel differently. I think that Adrian is going to come. He's coming to win the fight. I think he's going to put on an excellent performance. And this is the new Adrian. We've we've heard different things in the past from Adrian, and um, I I think this is the defining fight in his career that's going to take him to the next level, to the superstar level where he belongs. So without further ado, I'd like to um, have Adrian Bronner. AB, you there? Yo, what's up? Why don't you say a few words to the press? I I hear you like slim and like uh, in, a, in a killer mode right now. Man, listen, man. At this point, fuck the press. They all against me. I'm ready to fight, and um, next week I'm uh, I'm gonna show everybody, man. I'm still that young, hungry animal, and I will take over the sport of boxing. So, so I'm ready to answer my question and get off this motherfucker phone. I think on that note, we better turn it over to questions real quick. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions at this time, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Again, if you have any questions at this time, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. And I'm waiting for callers to join the queue. Hello? My first question is going to come from Keith Idick from theboxingscene.com. Please go ahead. Hey, Adrian, how, how much has... Um being the underdog in this fight, you talked about it at the press conference. You were joking around a little bit about it. But uh, how much has it motivated you, though, and really driven you during this camp to, to get ready for this fight? Um, I really don't look at that look at that because I know by the time by the time next week it won't it won't be what it was. But um, you know, I I just want to go out there and show show the people. You know, uh, I, I am I am one of the one of the top boxers for a reason. I will be victorious next week. How much has it helped you to go out to Colorado Springs? That you, you made a point of saying that you really thought that was going to make a difference for you in the camp. How has it translated to uh, to helping you better prepare for the fight? I feel great, man. You know, uh, I weighed in at 144 this morning. And, um, I can make weight tomorrow if I wanted to, but uh, I'm, I'm just cruising, man. I'm just ready to put on a show. Has it been easier for you to get down to, to you know to around 140 than you thought, or about what you expected? No, it was it was it's actually been easy, man. You know, um, I could have been there, but I ain't had a reason to do it. Now I got a reason to make 140. Plus, I ain't giving nobody a half a million. I barely give a nigga. I mean, I barely give somebody ten dollars. I ain't got to give nobody half a million or nothing. <laughs> I have also a question for Mikey. Uh, Mikey, what what has uh, camp been like for you? And uh, you know, has it been easier because you, you you're weighing in at a higher weight? Has that helped you at all? 
Oh, the, the camp has been great. Um, as far as the weight, that's never been a problem. And uh, that it's it's uh, just training hard, you know, getting in shape. That's the uh, number one thing. The weight is not, like I said, it's not a problem. So I, I know I ain't worried about the weight. And um, we just uh, actually are eating a little bit more than, than usual to uh, keep the weight higher because I would have dropped weight too soon. And we're sparring big guys. And we don't want to do that, you know. It's not not the correct thing to do. So I I just feel very comfortable right now. Also, just one last question for Leonard. Leonard, I was just wondering if you could tell me what your thoughts are on how much this has motivated Adrian to be, you know, viewed as the underdog in the fight, and uh, you know how much that's kind of helped him prepare for this fight. Is Leonard there or no? Leonard? His line is in the call. Well, he's probably on the he's probably on the phone with with Connor. We let's go to the next, go to the next question. All right. How about you guys just ask me all the questions? All the other team doesn't know what they're doing. Our the next question is. All the questions. Our next question is going to come from Dan Raphael from ESPN. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, My first question is for you, Adrian. Hello, Adrian. What's up, Dan? Hey, my question for you. First of all, did I hear you say that that the penalty for you not making weight or Mikey not making weight was $500,000? Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so that's a pretty big motivation, I would imagine, to get down uh, to the 140 limit. Uh, Is that how you're looking at it? I mean, I ain't giving nobody nothing. Okay, fair enough. Um, uh, Adrian, in his introductory remarks, uh, Leonard Ellerby said that that he thought this was your defining fight. And you've had some major fights. You've won titles in four weight classes and fought some good names and all. But do you look at this as a defining fight against Mikey Garcia, even though, you know, it's not for a world title, but it's a it's a pretty big deal fight, it seems to me. Yeah, um, he's, a, he's another star in boxing um, in his agent time. So, uh, of course, it's a hell of a fight for me, and um, it's, it's definitely going to be a defining moment for Adrian Brown. What do you think a win would do for you? Uh, it depends, man. You know, uh, you know, when, when you got guys like me, they always try to find some type of way to don't not not give you the credit all the way. You know, at the end of the day, man, I'm just going in and get my victory, man. Do you think that a fighting a fighter of the caliber of Mikey Garcia, who is undefeated, who has the titles in the two weight classes, who many people consider one of the top fighters in boxing, pound for pound, uh, you know, an exciting fighter, you know, all the all the, the the things that people look to to their top fighters that he seems to possess, and if you win the fight, it's almost it seems to me like it's almost going to be a bigger victory for you if you win than than the, the fights that you won world championships in, which were not always against well-known opponents. Is that a fair assessment, do you think, that this would be even more significant uh, than any of those world title victories? I mean, you you, 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 you can't say that, but at the end of the day, man, you know, uh, I, fought, I fought a lot of good, good fighters, man, but, you know, I, I'm just worried about getting my victory, man. I, I can't. I can I can state some facts and state some facts, but I ain't trying to get into all that right now. I'm in fighting mode, and I'm just ready to fight. Okay, I'd like to ask uh, Mikey a couple questions also. Thank you for that, Adrian. Look forward to seeing you next week. Uh, hey, Mikey. Hey, Dan. Uh, I just asked Adrian about, uh, you know, uh, if he were to score this victory, would it be almost bigger than the fights in which he won world titles in, um, even though this is not a world title fight? And I asked you the same question. I mean, you've got the title belts that you've won over the, over the years, but do you think that Broner, because of the, the recognition of his name and, you know, the, the fact that he's a, a very, very well-known fighter who has fought some big names also, that it would be almost a bigger win for you in this fight than when you won your world titles? Because the, well, you know, the fighters that you won the world titles against were not, you know, household names by any means. Well, he, he's, he's the most accomplished fighter, uh, four-division world champion, and uh, like you said, the most recognized uh, name, so that, that makes it a bigger deal. I mean, 
fans and and the media are more excited about my fight with Adrian Broner's fight, you know, than than some of the other world title fights around the category. That's right. Those, you know, high profile fight that this fight really is. This fight is 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 the, uh, uh, much bigger scale than some of the world title fights, you know, that me and, and Adrian have been part of, and some of the title fights that are around the division. So it is it is a very big important fight, and it could definitely easily be seen as probably the biggest fight of both of our careers for 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 Adrian and myself. But you know I'm I'm not looking at that, I'm not letting that distract me from my task at hand, which is defeat Adrian Broner. No, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna diminish the titles. I know they're important. They help guys create their legacies and help fans give recognition and, and media to the best fighters out there. But uh, Mikey, do you, do you think the fact that this is not for a world title? Uh, matters at all to anybody? I don't think so. It doesn't. I've not heard a single boxing fan say to me, "Well, you know, I'm not interested in Mikey Garcia versus Adrian Broner because it's not a world title fight." No, everybody's excited for the fight. I mean, I get nothing but you know um, good reviews and, and good comments. And, you know, everybody's so excited about you know this fight coming up. Like I said, it, it, it seems like it's bigger than some of the other title fights that are happening around the weight class, and um, you know, it just shows you the, the kind of fighter. That Adrian Broner is. He he has a lot of, you know, fans and and uh, he's a high profile fighter, and people see me as as a high profile fighter. And when two guys, you know, like us get in the ring, you know, it makes for a great matchup. Hey Adrian, could you address that briefly? Uh, your thoughts about the the magnitude of the fight, as Mikey was just talking about, that even though it isn't a world title fight, that it's as he was saying, and I agree with him, that it's in many ways it's bigger than a world title fight just because of the the name recognition that both of you guys bring to the table. Um. It's a good fight for boxing, man. You got uh, two fighters who was both on top of power once at one, one point in time. You know, uh, you know, I'm a four-time world champion. He's a three, three-time world champion, three different weight class. I'm a four-time world champion, four different weight classes. It's a big fight for boxing. And if they're a boxing, um, uh, it's going to be a hell of a fight July 29th. All right, one more question for you, Mikey. Uh, I know uh, – that you're moving up uh, the five pounds to, to take on this challenge. Um, have you given thought to whatever happens about whether you'd like to stay in this weight class or would you still like at some point to defend your title at lightweight? Well, I still have uh, plans on coming down to 135 to unify the titles or have a big uh, title defense at lightweight. But, um, you know, I, after being in boxing so long and learning the politics and the business about it, you got to be flexible. You got to be able to adjust and, and make those adjustments and, and continue with with my career. I'm not going to sit around, wait for a fight, you know, and chase anybody. I'm here to, you know, take on the biggest fights available, the biggest challenges available, whether that means at 135 or 140 or possibly even 147. Okay, very good. Uh, Thank you for that, Mikey. Hey, Lou, can you answer one question for me? Yeah, sure. I just, I mean, and I'm, I'm interested in your opinion about what, what Mikey and Adrian were talking about, it being a big fight for boxing, uh, despite the fact that there is no world title at stake, and, and your thoughts about that. I mean, you promoted a lot of fights that were big title fights and non-title fights. Your your view on uh, nobody really, that they love to fight even if it's not for a title. Uh, you know what, I, in, in this kind of case, I don't think the title matters. And you know what, I actually like the fight too. They're fighting at 140. They're fighting at a legit weight class. It's not like a you know, uh, some strange catchweight situation. They're fighting at, at 140, which frankly is pretty much, I mean, for a guy who's a 35-pound champion, the highest you would expect Mikey to go for a challenge, and it's the best weight Adrian's fought at in his career. I mean, he's undefeated at 40, and, and 47, frankly, is not, not his best weight. So I don't think the weight matters. I think the weight here is sort of optimal to see a great fight. And I don't think anyone cares. I think I think this is a great fight. Personally, I think this is bigger, you know, than your average title fight. Very good. Thank you for that, Lou. I look forward to seeing all you guys next week. Thank you for your time. Our next question is going to come from Alex um, Raskin from um, Vice Sports. Please go ahead. Hey, this is for Mikey. Um, against a, a, a counterpuncher, a good defensive fighter like Adrian, how much do you, does your style have to change? Do you have to maybe be less aggressive than you would normally be? Uh, well, you know what? We um we have been working on a lot of things at the gym, working on different game plans, um, different styles of sparring partners, so I can be ready for whatever Adrian Broner brings on Saturday night. You know, if I have to be aggressive, I will be aggressive. If I have to maybe box, I will box. If I have to try to stay in the middle of the ring, 
then I'm, I'm I'm prepared to do whatever it takes to win this fight. And um, like I said, I, I still I know people still haven't seen everything that I have to offer, and I think Adrian Broner will be the one to challenge me enough and push me to that next level and bring out the best out of me. And that's it. That's it for me. Thanks, Mikey. Our next question is going to come from Michael Knox from Fox Sports. Please go ahead. Uh, what's going on? This uh, Adrian Bronner. This first question is for you. Um, the world keeps hearing about the all-new About Billions and what that entails. Can you enlighten the boxing world and, as well as your fans on what that exactly means that About Billions has a new uh, look on life in boxing? Everybody keeps saying About Billions, but the next – the, 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 the new series is called About Boxing. So as you can tell, you know, um, I left the About Billions lifestyle, and, you know, I left it alone for, for this whole camp. And, and that's why the new series that I've been putting out is About Boxing because I'm about boxing. So, you know, um, my main focus is just, you know, uh, getting in the best shape I can so I can go fuck Mikey up. And, that, and that's, that's, that's it. You know, it's nothing personal. You know, um, it's the hurt business, and you know, I, I know he's definitely trying to come hurt me, but uh, I'm coming to fuck him up, and I ain't with all the bullshit. And I'm, I'm, I'm really ready to get off this motherfucker phone for real. I, I feel like we're too close right now, and I feel like punching me in his fucking face. But you know, uh, hurry up with y'all questions, and I'm ready, ready to hang up on y'all. Well, 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 thank you, uh, Adrian, for that. Uh, Mikey, that actually gets me to my next question of you. You hear, uh, Adrian Bronner. Say he's ready to get on right now. Y'all even being on the phone call together is a little bit too close to each other. What's your take on about billions becoming about boxing and you trying to stop that whole movement? Well, that's great because that just means it's going to be a better fight. You know, I don't want to have a, a fight against a unfocused, untrained, un, un, you know, out of shape Adrian Broner. That, that takes away all the credit. And you know, he, he seems to be ready to get in the ring now. And that's 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 actually I love that because. Uh, when we were at the press conference, he was being a little too friendly, and we we ain't friends. We're definitely not friends on Saturday night, at 29th. So that's that's exactly the Adrian Brown I want to hear. Thank you. That's from uh, Fox Sports, Solon Sports, Mike Knox. I hope you guys uh, can't wait the next week to see that fight live. We're looking very forward to it. Thank you guys. Thank you. Our next question is going to come from Lem Satterfield from Premier Boxing Champions. Please go ahead. Hey, how you doing, Adrian? I appreciate you staying on the phone. Um, first of all, can you discuss um, breaking your hand um, in the first round against Adrian Granados, and how difficult was that to overcome? Was that Would you rank that as the most adversity that you perhaps had to overcome in the ring? Um, no, nah, my, my worst adversity was uh, – I actually broke both of my hands when I fought uh, this Mexican kid named Lugo. And um, I think it was on the uh, Pacquiao Oscar card. Okay. Yeah, I broke both of my hands in that fight. And fighting and finishing that fight, that was probably the worst because that shit hurt it like hell. But, you know, it was tough, though. But, uh, you know, I got through it. You know, now, you know, I'm going to in a bigger fight, bigger task, and I'm just ready to put on the show. Now, do you feel, obviously, I guess your hands are healthy and everything. Do you feel that you're going to, you know, being on weight, you said you weighed 144 today, that your power is going to be maximized at 140 where you're undefeated? Man, you know, uh, honestly, man, I just, I'm just ready to, to, to let the world see, man, you know, uh, it's not a mystery what I do at 140 pounds and now, you know, and um, I'm going to be in tip-top shape, and I'm pretty – I hope he be in tip-top shape, you know. Uh, but I, I, I'm I'm ready to let my hands go out of talk until last night. What are your thoughts on the fact that they're saying that you're the underdog by as much as 5-1 to one, um, and that there he has said that he will show that he's the better boxer? What are your thoughts? About that, man, that's a damn lie. Ain't no way, ain't no way in hell he he be a better boxer than me. Who who he beat? Come on, man, quit playing me. Go Dave, away from he. Do you have a prediction? I know you said you're ready to fuck him up. Do you have a prediction? 
I mean, the way you're looking in training, the way you feel in training, and obviously the way you're amped up right now, can you explain how this fight is going to go from what round and, and, and when you expect, I guess, to end? Listen, man, I, I can't tell the future, but I know I'm going to be victorious. Okay. Uh, I guess one last question uh, along the lines of what the guy just uh, asked you. Um, you had said in earlier interviews that you're growing older. In fact, you're going to be 28 uh, the day before this fight um, and that you're more mature um, and that living like a grown man and not a 20-year-old is something that you're ready to do and you, in your words, leave the ghetto stuff behind. Can you characterize what you mean by that? Um, it's just time to take take boxing more serious, man. You know, uh, when 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 you touch the type of money I've I've touched at a young age, man, you know, you don't know how to handle it, you know. Um, but you know, um, you know, like I said before, I'm older. You know, I, I got experience in this lifestyle, and um, I know what I want to do, and that's uh, be the best agent Brown I can be. Okay, thanks a lot, Adrian. I appreciate your time. Um, Mikey? Yes. Mikey, you heard the questions I asked him um, about his power, about his lifestyle. You talked about both of those things. Um, Can you talk about why you think you're the better boxer than Adrian Broner? Well, I'm going to show it on Saturday the 29th. I'm going to show my skills. I'm going to show what I'm capable of doing, like I said before. I haven't had a, a challenger, you know, really push me to that next level, and I think Andrew Brunner will do that, and I'll be able to show everybody, you know, another side of Mikey Garcia you still haven't seen. Okay. It's, how does he rank among the opponents? I mean, I don't think you faced anybody with his overall athleticism, uh, overall punching power, especially relative to this weight class. Can you give me an honest assessment of how he ranks? Is he – even though you've won titles against other guys, is he the best guy you fought? You will I think it. he will be. I think he will be uh, the toughest uh, challenge, the toughest opponent, the most accomplished fighter, um, you know, that, that I have faced. So, I'm, I'm, you know, honestly, I think this will be, you know, the toughest fight of my career so far. Okay, thanks a lot, Mike. I appreciate it. Sure thing. You're welcome. And our next question is going to come from Terrell Van from FightView360.com. Please go ahead. Hey, Doe, this question is for uh, Adrian. Are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah. Question is, um, can you talk about the um, underdog situation? I understand you're a little frustrated, but I really don't feel that it's fair to rate you like that low as far as your skills. Can you talk about that a little bit? Uh, listen, man, they- these people, I don't care about being an underdog because at the end of the day, man, my, I don't make no money off of that. that. That's for some gambling people, man. I don't, that's some people in Vegas, man. It's okay, though. They, they, I bet they won't do it again after this fight. You're saying right now you're um, 144 pounds, correct? Yep. Um, that's it. My my question was answered. <laughs> Do we have any more questions? Yes. Our next question is going to come from Alex um, Raskin from Vice um, Sports. Please go ahead. Hey, this is for Adrian um, and for Mikey as well. Um, do, do you think that a win uh, next week would make I, both, this for both of you would make you guys a pay per view fighter? Would that would that push you to that level uh, of being a pay per view fighter? I guess uh, Adrian first. Um, I mean, you could put me on pay per view now. I'm a sell. <laughs> to be honest, but you know, um, with a defining, with a, with a defining victory like this, of course, it's gonna set my career to the to, to the next level. But you know, um, I'm not worrying about that. I know all I gotta do is. Just be sharp and um, get this victory and, and do what I do, and um, pay-per-view is going to come. 
and Mikey? Well, I think you know, Alex. It takes uh, yeah. the right. It takes the right uh, matchup to be to take it to pay per view. I mean, this fight itself could could have been a, a pay per view possibly, and uh, you know, it, when you got two exciting fighters with uh, a lot of fans on both sides, you know that that makes pay per view. Now, a win over Broner might you know help me you know get to that level faster, but you know it, it's just you got to have the right guy. I mean, if I beat Broner, but then my next fight is against a nobody, there's no way that can be a pay-per-view fight. You have to be able to fight, you know, the right guy that can, you know, generate the buzz and and make it a pay-per-view show. Alex, you know, pay-per-view is not necessarily the holy grail, even if you're a big fighter, as was proven when you just saw a pay-per-view fight between Kovalev and Ward that about 125,000 people bought. So... Far more people are going to see this fight, and if you go back, you can go back to Golovkin Lemieux and a lot of other things. I'm not blaming the fighters, but you know, for people to d- dip into their pockets in an economy that's difficult and dish out seventy dollars regularly, you know, you need you, you need the right event. A fight like this is a great fight. It's on Showtime, where it should be accessible to many more people, and you know, and frankly, you can you can get you know uh, more than half a year of Showtime for the price. Of of uh, of one pay per view. Yeah, sure. that's a great point, Lou. Thank you, Lou. Okay. And our last question is going to come from Keith Oddick from theboxingscene.com. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, my last question is for Mikey. Mikey, I was just wondering who was the biggest puncher you fought so far, and and can you tell us, you know, why that is? Um, biggest puncher. I mean. I've been faced with some guys that are supposed to be heavy punchers, but I haven't felt their power. You know, I had the right game plan and didn't really feel it. Dijon was supposed to be a big power puncher. I didn't feel it. Uh, Salido's a, you know, heavy hitter. He, you know, has become champion. Even after I beat him, he still became champion several times and beat some top guys, and I didn't I didn't feel his power. Um, I, I felt, you know, some other guys earlier in my career that are, you know, not, not any, any known names but um i think adrian broner is the, the 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 guy that probably hits the hardest out of everybody especially if we're moving up in weight he's you know a, a bigger man naturally you know in, as far as weight than than i am um so we'll, we'll find out you know saturday night the 29th thank you mike i believe that was the last question Anything else? Um, Adrian and Mikey, can you make closing statements? And Leonard and Lou as well. Mikey, you go. You you start, and then Adrian, and then. Well, I just want to you know thank everybody for all the love and support. I mean, honestly, this is gonna be a great fight. Can't wait. Great show. I know uh, Adrian Broner is uh, motivated and coming in, you know, ready to win, and I'm doing the same. So that makes for that much better a fight. And, uh, you know, the 29th is uh, the beginning of uh, my my next stage of my career, better stage. Adrian. Thank you, Mikey. Thank you, Adrian. Bye. (laughs) Leonard, are you there? Yes. Um, The 29th is going to be a great fight. Uh, again, I, um, I'm very confident that Adrian is going to come out and put on the best performance of his career. This is a, a defining fight in his career, and he wants to make a great statement. And we just want, we're just very excited for everyone to tune in. But it's going to be a great fight. Thank you. Where were you? Are you there still? Yeah, I think. Look, I think that Adrian's probably hungrier than he's ever been, literally and figuratively, and he's got his hands full. With Mikey Garcia as a pound for pound guy, this is a great, great fight, and it's on Showtime, live on Showtime, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Pacific Time. So it's an opportunity for a lot of people to be able to see the kind of fight that, as was pointed out, you know, could be on pay per view. Except you don't have to pay for this unless you just have to subscribe to Showtime. And many, many more people should see this. Uh, it's a great fight that's representative of the sport. And if you're anywhere near 
the tri-state area, anywhere near New York, Brooklyn, you know, get to the Barclays Center. Go online right now, get your tickets, and hope to see you next Saturday night, the 29th. And always a pleasure to work with Leonard Floyd and the whole Mayweather Promotions crew. Thank you all. I would like to say thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining me. I'll disconnect and have a great day.